Hey everyone, welcome to week 12 of Advanced Econometrics. This week we're talking about individual level uh, coefficients, uh, which we'll, we'll describe, we'll define what those are and talk about how to uh, uh, calculate them this week. Uh, so last week we talked about simulation-based estimation, which we're using for uh, to estimate mixed logit models. And this week we're gonna dig even a little deeper and look at some of the things we can do with distributions in uh, the mixed logit model and, and some kind of additional simulations that we can do using those, uh, using those results from our mixed logit model. Uh, so specifically what we're gonna talk about this week are conditional distributions of coefficients. We'll first kind of talk about that broadly. Then we're gonna derive what, what we mean by conditional distributions of coefficients and how to represent them mathematically. And then we'll talk about some of those applications uh, of those conditional distributions, thinking about things like getting all the way to individual level uh, coefficients. And so each one of those topics will be uh, its own video. And then in class, we're gonna work through an R example. And this week's, reading, uh, th this week's material uh, coincides with chapter 11 of the train textbook. So take a look at the, that chapter in the textbook first and then uh, watch these videos to get, get another, uh, another coverage of the uh, material. So let's start by talking kind of broadly about this idea of conditional distributions of coefficients. And to, to, to start, let's think back to the mixed logit model from a couple of weeks ago. We've, we've covered the mixed logit model uh, two weeks ago. And then last week we talked about how to kind of estimate the mixed logit model uh, use, using these simulation-based estimators. But kind of the, the crux of the mixed logit model is that it allows for unobserved variation in preferences throughout the population by using random coefficients. So we defined this kind of density or distribution of coefficients in the population, this kind of F uh, density. And then ultimately what we do in the mixed logit model, as you remember, is we estimate the, the theta parameters that define those distributions. That defines what does the distribution of beta or betas, if we have multiple random coefficients, our theta parameters are telling us what do those distributions look like throughout the entire population. And that can be useful to understand what do coefficients look like, you know, how are coefficients distributed throughout the entire population. But what they don't tell us is anything about where any individual decision maker falls within that distribution. Just looking at that population distribution, we don't know anything about where any one particular person uh, might fall in that distribution. It's just telling us kind of this general overall distribution if we looked across all people in the population. But what if we actually want to better a single individual's coefficients? Well, it turns out we can combine that kind of unconditional or population distribution, that F density that we, we've already talked about. Uh, we can combine that with the choices actually made by the individual to try to narrow in on that individual's coefficients and define what we're going to call a conditional distribution of coefficients. So let's, let's talk to an example here. Suppose we're studying how commuters choose their travel mode and we have some coefficient beta that tells us the utility of driving relative to the other commute modes. So this is like some of the problem sets we've worked through. We think that there is heterogeneity in driving preferences though. Some people really like driving. Some people really hate driving. So we wanna model beta as being a random coefficient. Let's well, suppose we've done that, we've estimated our model and we get that beta is normally distributed with a mean of three and variance of four. So it looks like this distribution that I've plotted here, right? There's a lot of mass right around, you know, three, whatever three means in this context, three units of utility, but that, that's what it is. But, um, but there's also a decent amount of variation around that, even to the extent where there's a, a, a non-trivial number of uh, individuals that actually have negative preferences for driving. They just want to avoid driving kind of at all cost. And so we might wonder what is you know, amongst this, this is the distribution for the entire population, but what is any individual's kind of specific coefficient, like a beta sub n for individual n, what is that coefficient for an individual? Well, let's think through this question for a couple of different kinds of individuals. 
Right, so what is the individual specific coefficient for a person drawn randomly from the population? Well, just any person drawn randomly from the population, we don't know anything more about them than just that they're part of this population. So we would say we really don't know anything more about this random person. We would just say that they, you know, they're just one of the many people drawn from this unconditional distribution of betas in the population. So we think that there's probably a good likelihood that this, this random person that's drawn would have, uh, you know, a, a coefficient near three, but it could be very positive or it could even be negative. There's, we kind of know nothing more than just what this distribution already told us. But now let's suppose we're thinking about someone who regularly drives to work. We know that this is a person who regularly drives to work. Well, if we know that they regularly drive to work, then we can probably start to infer that they probably have, you know, that they're going to be more likely at least to have one of these relatively large values of beta. If they're choosing to drive, it must be because their, their driving preference is strong enough to outweigh any of the other factors kind of in general. And so, uh, so in general, you think if we see someone driving regularly, then they're probably, they probably have a, a relatively large value of beta sub n. So they're going to be more kind of up in this range of the distribution. Conversely, if we were thinking about someone who regularly does not drive to work, somebody who takes the bus or the train or whatever the case might be, what are we going to think about them? Well, they probably have a relatively low or even a negative value of beta, right? If, if they had a really high beta, then it would be really likely that they'd be driving. But if they're not driving, then it must be the case that they tend to, that, that this kind of person tends to have a, a, a lower uh, value of beta. So we kind of just talked through three different distributions here. We've got the population distribution. Let's go to the next slide to see this. We talked, we've talked through this kind of population or unconditional distribution, which is what we estimate in the mixed logit model. And that is the, the solid line in this figure that I've plotted here. But then we talked through kind of two other distributions in very kind of general terms. But we talked about what do we think this beta sub n would look like for someone who regularly drives and someone who regularly does not drive. Well, we could think that, you know, conditioning on driving or not driving, we can actually get two different distributions. And we can think about what is the distribution of betas for the people who regularly drive. And as we said, we'd expect that to be relatively large values of beta. And so we might get something like this dashed line here. And what, what might we get for the distribution of betas for, for those individuals that we see regularly not driving? Well, that might be more like this dotted line here. And so what we're saying, just to kind of recap this, we haven't really formally defined anything yet, but the basic idea is we in the mixed logit model, we estimate this unconditional or population distribution. But once we factor in a little more information about individuals, like what choices they're actually making, we can start to say, instead of thinking that an individual is drawn from this kind of really general population distribution, that maybe they're actually coming from the dashed line or the dotted line, which is going to give us, you know, kind of additional information. We're going to, we're kind of getting a more refined distribution of what we think any particular individual's uh, uh, coefficient, coefficients are. And we'll see as we work through here that that, that's, uh, that can be useful uh, if, if for, for, for a variety of reasons that we'll talk about. Okay, let, let's kind of think through a thought experiment though, to kind of start to maybe more formally define what we mean here uh, by something like a conditional distribution of coefficients. So the thought experiment is, suppose that a population of individuals faces an identical choice setting. So everyone in this population faces the same choice set and the attributes of those choices are exactly the same. So we've got many people all facing the exact same set of alternatives, attributes, everything. But that, that population of individuals has heterogeneous preferences that are denoted by the distribution of coefficients, uh, this F density of beta defined by theta, just like with the mixed logit model. So th this is you know, the, just that unconditional or population distribution that we've previously defined. And at this point, hopefully we, we, we have a good understanding of. Now among that population, let's consider the set of people 
who choose alternative I. So some particular alternative, let's look at just that group of people. So this is gonna be a, a subset of the population. And in particular, it's a non-random subset of the population. So we would expect these individuals come from a population that have heterogeneous preferences. These individuals will also have heterogeneous preferences, but because it's a non-random sample, they're likely gonna have a, a different and possibly a very different distribution from the population at large. Just like we saw in, in that kind of uh, very general example where the distribution for drivers and the distribution for non-drivers are very different from one another and very different from the population. So if we think about just the group that chooses a particular alternative, we can think about having a distribution for that group, but that that distribution is gonna be very different than the distribution for the population at large. And it's gonna be this distribution of coefficients that we call a conditional distribution. And we are going to denote it as H, a density defined by H. And it's gonna be, once again, a density of betas, but now we're gonna condition on three things i, x, and theta. So we're conditioning on the choice that's made, the kind of data that defined the choice setting, and then also we still need to think about those uh, population uh, uh, kind of parameters. And so the idea here is this H density is gonna tell us the distribution of betas among the group. And this is a group that comes from a population with an unconditional distribution defined by theta but it's the distribution among that group who choose alternative I when faced with choice setting X. That's gonna be kind of our, our, our formal word definition of a conditional distribution. Let me say it again. We've got this group that, that chose the same alternative. We can look at the distribution among that group. Remember this group is part of a population that's defined by theta. But this group in particular, we're looking at their distribution, and this is the group who choose alternative I when faced with choice setting N. So we wanna condition on all three of those things and look at what is the density or distribution of betas for the group that chooses I when faced with X out of a population defined by theta. So that's kind of the formal wordy definition. In the next video, we're going to put some math behind that and see how we can actually calculate this uh, conditional distribution of densities that gets us once again, kind of this more, or, or conditional distribution of coefficients that gets us this kind of more refined density for specific individuals or groups of individuals that tells us more about those individuals than just that population distribution in general. And we'll talk about the math behind this in the next video.